Money Stop Mafia. How you doing? It's your boy Cole of the Cusimano Brothers. And if I'm doing the intro, that must mean one thing. We are without Steven once again. That's right. Steven is on to bigger and better things, I would have to say at this point. Uh, he just had a segment on the Yes Network talking all things Yankee, Somerset Patriots. So uh, hats off to him doing a great job. We will get him back on here probably next week. Also got to kind of figure things out on the scheduling front now that the Patriot season is back in gear. So I'll be honest, this week was a bit short notice. I did try getting my good pal Cody Johnson to make his money stop debut this week. Uh, as well as some other potential guest hosts. But again, just very last minute, I'm going to be out at Firebird Motorsports Park covering the Arizona Nationals for NHRA. Should be a great time out there. But first, we got to talk Martinsville, one of my personal favorite tracks on the circuit, the paperclip in Virginia. We're going back-to-back Virginia races here. And on that, I'm going to recap Richmond really quick for you guys. We'll not go too much in depth here. Uh, First off, because it was a classic Richmond race, uh, not a whole lot to discuss outside the fact that Martin Truex Jr. quite simply dominated this race, my race winner pick, by the way. And that win got stolen by none other than Denny Hamlin, who was our second repeat winner of 2024. Uh, and I say stolen because, well, first off, I, I can't dismiss what a great pit stop the 11 team had on the money stop. But on the final restart of the day, it was clear as day. Denny Hamlin jumped the restart, jumped it, rolled it, whatever you want to call it. He was going before the restart zone. And that's a big no-no. There, there's a restart line for a reason. And NASCAR did not make the call. They didn't even review the final restart of the day. And I have problems with this, I gotta be honest, and this is not me being a Denny hater, a Joe Gibbs hater, this could have been Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, Rick Ware Racing, I don't care. That rule is in place for a reason. If you're not going to mandate this rule and make sure drivers obey it, then why even have it? Um, And the comment that Elton Sawyer made really irked me because he said, and I quote, If this happens on lap 10, 50, or 300, the call could have been different. And he acknowledged that Denny Hamlin did indeed go before the restart zone. And my question to Elton Sawyer and NASCAR is, what makes the final restart of the day any different than any other restart prior? And my answer to that, to my own question, would be the fact that that final restart is deciding the race winner. So you're deciding someone who gets bonus points, a race win, a potential playoff berth, and you don't want to police this rule on the final restart of the day, but you would do it on lap 10, 50, or 300, where there is no race in the line at that point. I don't understand this call at all by NASCAR or Elton Sawyer. Um, I think that there are a lot of you know, divisive feelings within the garage area because this is something that happens a lot. I feel like drivers do roll the restart, maybe not as blatant as Denny did at Richmond, but I don't know. My personal thought is if you got a rule in place, freaking mandate it. And I I think what Elton Sawyer said and, and that it could have been different earlier in the race, that's just BS to me because This is the final restart of the race. It's literally deciding the winner. Joey Logano, had he won this race, would have been in the playoffs. Hell, I know he finished fourth, but Truex could have been in the playoffs. And my thought is, it should not be different if it was earlier in the race. Why are we bending the rules? If there's a rule in place, it should be like that every single attempt, no matter what. So uh, this, this was definitely, you know, it bugged me, but I, I guess my, my thought as to why NASCAR didn't review or issue any penalties after the race was maybe that it was run on Easter Sunday and that they didn't want to confuse new viewers or I, I don't know what, what the case may be. I, I can't, I can only speculate. However, on that front, I will say I did have a lot of family over for Easter 
this race was going on during our huge Italian dinner. And those who were unfamiliar with NASCAR really enjoyed it. And I think that was a great sign. Uh, I think there was enough action, you know, between the stages and then obviously the end of the race to keep these new audiences engaged. So overall, solid race for Richmond. It was, again, very typical Richmond. But want to just end things there. I know we got to try to keep this condensed, the show. Uh, so with that, let's go through the top 10 here. Winner, again, was once again Denny Hamlin, followed by Joey Logano scoring runner-up. Then scoring another podium finish was Kyle Larson, followed by Martin Truex Jr. And Chase Elliott rounded out the top five, first top five of the season for that nine team. Then we had a really, really resilient effort by Christopher Bell to finish sixth, had a late speeding penalty in the race. Then you had William Byron seventh, Brad Keselowski and Chris Buescher in eighth and ninth. So both RFK cars once again finishing top 10 this week. And then you had Tyler Reddick rounding up the top 10. So I do want to pat ourselves on the back here because uh, of the top 10 drivers mentioned, eight of them were of the 12 drivers that we had kind of previewed in our show leading up to this race. So we did a really, really good job on the analysis front and looking to kind of carry momentum into Martinsville, as we have done all season, uh, done a really great job, winning a lot of people a lot of money, and we're only going to get better from here. So with that, let's shift gears to Martinsville. Starting lineup is going to be decided on Saturday at 5.20 p.m. Eastern time, so night qualifying. And this will, again, be very important to note, as it always is for DFS, but especially for somewhere like Martinsville, where track position is crucial in this race. So... Whereas you may want to look for drivers starting deeper in the field, might not be a bad idea to pick drivers starting within that top 10, top 15 range because it's going to be tough to get that track position back if you are deep in the field. So looking at our top five race winner odds for the Cookout 400 at Martinsville, we have Denny Hamlin as the clear, heavy odds-on favorite to uh, go for two in a row here at plus 250. I have not seen odds like that for a race winner in a really long time. I don't even know if I actually have uh, ever in the Cup Series uh, since this next-gen car, so that's pretty wild to see. Then you've got a three-way tie for the second-best odds to win it at plus 750 with Kyle Larson, Martin Truex Jr., and Ryan Blaney. Then round out that top five with Christopher Bell at plus 900. So Vegas seems to think that Denny Hamlin will be the winner in this race uh, almost surely. But what do I think? Who do I think is going to be contenders in this race? I'll kick it off with Denny Hamlin. He's the most expensive driver in DFS at $11,500. Again, became the second repeat winner of 2024 with wins over two of his last three starts in the Cup Series. Uh, He has an 11th place average this year in 2024 with a lowest finish of 19th and 24th respectively, both at super speedway. So when we're not at drafting tracks, Denny has been really, really solid. He's riding a three race top five streak at Martinsville with a series best 395 laps led over those three starts. Also has a 10th place average, which is the fifth best in the field over that four race set. And that is brought down by an anomalous 28th place finish in his next-gen debut at the paperclip. But Denny Hamlin is the modern-day Mr. Martinsville. Five wins, nearly 2,400 laps led, and a 70% top 10 rate. Those are all series bests, but his 10.1 average is second best to Ryan Blaney, but who has 20 less starts than him at the paperclip. Speaking of old YRB, our reigning champ, again, plus $750 for the win and $10,500 for DFS, which is $1,000 cheaper than Denny Hamlin. He is the best of the best in the next-gen era at Martinsville, in my opinion. One of three drivers with top 10s in all four starts. He won the most recent race there, and he has top fives in two other starts with the lowest finish of 7th. That amounts to a 3.8 average finish, which is the best in the series over that four-race set. His ninth-place average through 16 starts leads the series again. uh, Denny Hamlin's second with that 10.1, but 20 more starts than him. He has a 50% top-five rate with two runner-ups on top of that win. 
Uh, I will say, though, it has been tough sledding for that 12 team the last three weeks, failing to place above 12th in that three-race stretch. However, I think uh, there's very few things certain on a weekly basis, uh, and one of those things this week is that Ryan Blaney is a sure thing at Martinsville. So I love his value. He's $1,000 cheaper in DFS than Denny Hamlin. That will be important to note later on in the show. But why don't we switch things up here and go to a Hendrick Chevy now in our third-place finisher last week in Kyle Larson. HMS celebrating their 40th anniversary this year, but going all out this week with those ruby red paint schemes. And HMS has done really well at Martinsville uh, in the next-gen car. A couple of wins. Obviously, when you have these moments uh, where there's very big milestones going on, maybe certain sponsored races, you see certain drivers and certain teams kind of rise to the occasion and assert themselves as the dominant car that day. And I think of that Hendrick stable, Kyle Larson has the best odds to do that. I know that William Byron won this race not too long ago. Chase Elliott's won this race, uh, well, not this race, but he won at Martinsville back in 2020, obviously, before the next-gen car. So I think just looking at the season as a whole, Kyle Larson looks to be the best bet of that Hendrick stable. Again, coming off a very resilient third-place effort at Richmond, got spun with two to go by Bubba Wallace, was somehow, I don't, I, only Kyle Larson could do this. He he spun, got spun by Bubba Wallace from fourth place, somehow slotted back into sixth, and managed to restart where he was spun out from in fourth and finished third. So just completely absurd. Uh, th- that was his third top five of 2024, which is tied for the most. He's riding a three-race top six streak at Martinsville, including a win and runner-up. And his seventh-place average in that four-race set in the next-gen era is the third best among active drivers. Uh, uh, I don't think I mentioned his DFS price. His DFS price is $11,200, which is really, really pricey. I think it'll be tough to get Denny or Kyle or any of the drivers in that $11,000 range in your lineup. But uh, for race winner bets, both those drivers, Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, really, really good bets. And then I'll round out my favorites category with Christopher Bell. Again, plus 900 for the race win. And then $10,200 for DFS, our cheapest driver in this bracket. He is now one of three drivers riding a four-race top 10 streak this season with a 4.8 average in that span and just under 100 laps led between all four of those starts. Uh, Very important stat to note for DFS. And again, his value is pretty solid right there on par with Ryan Blaney. So uh, someone you could definitely squeeze in there. He has top 10s in two of his four next-gen starts at Martinsville, including a win, both Uh, Those top 10s, including the win, came in the fall. His best finish uh, in the spring was 16th, and he has an 11th place average in the next-gen era at Martinsville. So I would consider him the lesser of these four drivers that we've mentioned, but definitely someone to keep an eye on this weekend at the paperclip. Moving on to our sleepers, I love this bracket right here. Always one of our strong suits of each episode, and this one is no exception. I'm going to kick things off here with Chris Busher, who is plus 3000 for the race win and $8,600 for DFS. He is now one of three drivers running a four-race top 10 streak this season with a 6.5 average in that span. His five top 10s are tied for the most in the series with Christopher Bell, Martin Truex Jr., and Ty Gibbs. Mentioned Bell as the other driver to finish top 10 in the last four starts. The other driver is Truex, who was not mentioned uh, in this show as a favorite or a sleeper, by the way. Uh, but on that streak of top 10s, two of those top 10s were at tracks with the new short track package, including second place finish at Phoenix. And that package will be used once again here at Martinsville. So definitely some good juju on Busher's side with this package and hopefully going into Martinsville. He scored his first top 10 in the next-gen era at the paperclip in his most recent race there, which was an 8th place finish. He has a lowest finish of 24th with two top 15s as well, which equates to a 15.7 average. So, you know, nothing too flashy, but I don't think that's a really bad number. 15.7 is really, really solid, actually. And when you consider the fact that Busher has finished top 10 the last four races, he has the most top 10s in the series... 
score his first top 10 here in the next-gen car in the most recent race at Martinsville. I think that's a really, really good sign. And RFK Racing, by the way, has just looked really, really good these last four or five weeks. They've been, honestly, in my opinion, the best Ford team uh, in the garage area. So definitely want to keep an eye on Christopher Busher. However, I mentioned one Hendrick Carr in Kyle Larson. The other driver I have uh, on my mind a lot lately is Chase Elliott, who is plus 1200 for the race win and $8,800 for DFS. Again, coming off his first top five of the season, which was actually his first top five since the regular season finale at Daytona in 2023. So a uh, big step in the right direction for Chase Elliott coming out of Richmond. Looking at Martinsville, though, he got that elusive win there back in 2020, which propelled him to his first championship. He has over 1,000 laps led at Martinsville, 1,040 to be exact, which is the fifth best in the series, but he has 17 starts compared to the 30-plus uh, of the four guys in front of him. So that's really, really great numbers, very encouraging numbers, especially for DFS. In the next-gen car, uh, more of the same. He had a three-race, 10th-place streak snapped at the paperclip after finishing 17th this last fall. But in those four next-gen starts, he has 322 laps led, which is the second most in the series behind Denny Hamlin, uh, between three of four next-gen starts at the paperclip. And that includes 83 laps led in his most recent race there, which, again, he finished 17th in. So a little bit of a fluky result for a strong showing in that race. But Chase Elliott, somebody I would call a silent killer. I think he is a excellent pick for both prop bets and for DFS. I would even call him a lock for DFS, just looking at that lap laps led stat historically and in the next gen era at Martinsville. Looking ahead now to our runner up finisher from last week, Joey Logano. Same odds for the race win as Chase Elliott at plus twelve hundred for the race win, and then ninety five hundred dollars for DFS. Pretty solid value there for someone who has not been very great all season long. So maybe Vegas getting a bit uh, caught up in that runner-up finish last week. But who knows? This could be a really good week once again for Joey Logano. Maybe that was what he needed to get back on track. And I think this is a place where he definitely could get back on track because he is also one of three drivers with top 10s in all four next-gen starts in Martinsville. He's finished sixth or better with two runner-ups in all of the starts here in the next-gen era with a 3.8 average, and that is, again, tied for the best average finish in that span with teammate Ryan Blaney. So he's almost an identical driver to Ryan Blaney at Martinsville in the next-gen era. The only difference is that Blaney has the win. So two very, very similar drivers. I also want to note uh, that Joey Logano, those two runner-ups, both came in the spring races in the next-gen car. So... He is someone that could be a lineup winner for you this week at $9,500. His 1,100-plus laps led and 10-point on average finish are the third best overall at Martinsville. Uh, that is overall, not just in the next-gen era. So over 1,100 laps led, 10.9 average, third best overall for both those stats uh, among active drivers. Then we cannot talk Martinsville without talking about the Melon Man the coiner of the Hail Melon, Ross Chastain, who is plus $3,000 for the race win and $8,300 for DFS. He finished top five in both 2022 races at Martinsville, however, finished 13th and 14th last year, and that equals out to a ninth place average, which is the fifth best in the series in those four next-gen starts. He has a 10.7 average in 2024, with a lowest finish of 21st at Daytona, in a race that he very easily could have won. So I would call Ross Chastain a very high floor driver and a very safe DFS bet for this week. Someone who I might not call a lock, but I think if you're struggling to find somebody, you know, in that sleeper range to pick, he is a very, very safe bet and someone who you can definitely rely on as a sort of an, I don't want to say anchor, but maybe like a a good meat in the sandwich for your lineup. Uh, we'll call it that. <laughs> Uh, moving on here now to our value picks. I actually am a huge, huge fan of this uh, this week's picks. And it's going to be very easy for me to, to describe these ones because it's all four Stuart Haas Racing Fords. And this is a trend we've seen over the last year 
uh, in that the Stuart Haas racing cars are really good at Martinsville. Uh, they were horrible last year, <laughs> I'll put it bluntly, but Martinsville was one place where we pegged them to be good at uh, in the fall race because they were good in the spring, and that did indeed hold up. And I just want to say, collectively as a whole, Stuart Haas Racing hasn't looked terrible this year. Like, Josh Berry has had some really good runs, as has Noah Gregson. Chase Briscoe, we've noted numerous times, has been one of the faster Fords this season as a whole. Uh, Ryan Priest, <laughs> he's not been good. I'll, I'll, I'll put it bluntly there. But this is a track where he's had success, and I'll kick things off with him, actually, because he's the guy I'm, I'm least confident in, and I wouldn't really endorse him for DFS, uh, but I think he's someone worth looking at because of his short track resume, uh, his status in that realm. Uh, his value is $7,200 for this week, which is actually our second least expensive in this category. Uh, he won the pole in this race last year, led almost 150 laps uh, in his first Stewart Haas Racing start at Martinsville, but wound up 15th due to falling behind on a pit road penalty. Started ninth and then finished 20th in the fall race. So you're looking at someone who has a high f ceiling, but a, a decent floor, I'd call it. I mean, if he's going to finish 15th or 20th, that's not the end of the world. However, I will say, though, I mentioned uh, qualifying being a, a big factor in this race. He started ninth, started first last year in Martinsville. If that's the case again this year, I would stray away from, from Ryan Priest. Uh, his best finish this season was 14th at Bristol. Again, just proceed with caution, watch where he qualifies. Uh, I will go next to our actually least expensive driver in this category, in Noah Gregson, whom I'm actually a big fan of this week. He's had some really quality runs this season. Uh, finished 12th at Phoenix and Richmond, which are both tracks using the new short track package as is Martinsville this week. And speaking on Martinsville, he has one Xfinity win here with four top fives in five starts, including a runner-up finish. And he also has a win in the Truck Series here with a top seven finish in all four starts. So he has been almost automatic for a top 10, borderline top five at Martinsville at anything he's raced in. And seeing how he's fared with this new short track package at short tracks like Phoenix and, and Richmond, which you know, aren't really short, short tracks. Uh, I would definitely consider Noah Gregson a really, really intriguing pick for fantasy and someone who I'm not going to call a lock because obviously um, he, he still has a lot of inexperience on his side, but you look at what he's done this year. He's had some really good finishes. He had a couple top 10, top 15s, and this this driver and this team, I think, are are for real. So, like Noah Gregson, I'll move on up the ladder here to Josh Berry at $7,400, who boasted serious speed at both Bristol and Richmond. Again, one of these guys came up through a short track racing background, really, really esteemed resume in that regard. I would even say a little better than Ryan Priest. And uh, he's someone who I, I think he finished top 15 at Bristol and Richmond, 12th and 11th to be exact, 11th being a season best, which was last week at Richmond. But he very easily could have and probably should have gotten top 10s in those starts. Something interesting of note, actually. So Josh Berry has not had a cup start at Martinsville. Chase Elliott came back uh, for this race last year, coming off his ankle injury. But I don't think that's something to necessarily be turned off by because he won his first Xfinity start there uh, at Martinsville. And he also got three top fives there in six starts. So I think it's becoming clearer now whenever we go to a short track, and that could be something lesser like a Phoenix or a Richmond or even a true short track like a Bristol or a Martinsville. I think it's becoming clearer now that he's going to be somebody that you need to have in your lineups and someone to actually keep an eye on for prop bets for top 10s and top 5s um, when we go to these places. So, love Josh Berry. But my favorite value pick for this week, and he's been in, in this same air numerous times, and he's proven us right every single time, it's going to be Chase Briscoe, who is plus $1,600 for the race win and $7,500 for DFS. He has favorite type numbers at Martinsville. Uh, has not placed lower than ninth in the next-gen car at this track. Uh, best finish of fourth in the most recent race there. 
and he's got a seventh place average there in those uh, next gen starts. Top five in both races last year, over 100 laps led in the spring race, and his 12.7 average is fourth best over six starts collectively in the Cup Series. So uh, it's a, a bit of a small sample size, obviously. But 12.7 is very encouraging. He obviously has really, really good numbers in the next-gen era at Martinsville. And he's someone that actually I feel like could have won this race last year. Those over 100 laps led in the spring were second best to Ryan Priest, who we already mentioned. And he's just someone who I always look at in this next-gen car when we come to Martinsville as a perennial top 10 contender. So... Uh, love him this week, and as we've done numerous times when he's in this value picks category, I'm going to call him a lock at $7,500. So to recap things here for our favorites, we had Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, and Christopher Bell. Our sleepers were Chris Busher, Chase Elliott, Joey Logano, and Ross Chastain. And the value picks were the SHR stable of Josh Berry, Noah Gregson, Chase Briscoe, and Ryan Priest. Breaking this down to three drivers, I will go with Denny Hamlin for my favorite, Chase Elliott for my sleeper, and Chase Briscoe for my value pick. Moving on to big money bets here. These are bets where you can feel more comfortable placing a larger sum of money on. I'm looking at top five prop bets, top 10 prop bets. Top three is stretching it a little bit. Odds are usually pretty good there and above even almost always, but I think the I, I always look for the above even props for top fives and top tens and kind of go from there and then obviously the drivers I feel really good about going into the race but for me that will be Ryan Blaney to finish top five at plus 125 and then Kyle Larson to finish top five at plus 140 those were the only two in my opinion that I really felt good about there were not many other ones in the top 10 range top five range that I was super high on so uh give you a, a small sample of work with there obviously if you feel feel better about certain drivers go with your gut as we always preach but uh gonna move on here now to our head-to-head -head parlayable matchups and there are some actually excellent ones this week actually all five i have strong opinions on uh so i'll, I'll kick it off here with denny hamlin versus martin truex jr ryan blaney versus william byron chase briscoe versus noah gregson ross chastain versus alex bowman and Joey Logano versus Kyle Busch. The cool thing here is I actually spoke on all five favorites in each matchup, uh, and the opposing drivers were not mentioned in this show, so that makes things very easy, with the exception of Noah Gregson versus Chase Briscoe uh, for this week. So I like all the favorites for these matchups. That would be Denny Hamlin over Truex at minus 155, Ryan Blaney over William Byron at minus 150, Chase Briscoe over Noah Gregson at minus 175. Ross Chastain was actually tied with Alex Bowman at minus 115. And then Joey Logano over Kyle Busch at minus 225. So an overwhelming favorite there. Now, I've said this before. I would not advocate to do more than three parlayable matchups uh, each week. So while I do feel good about those five matchups I just mentioned and, and the drivers to finish ahead of the other drivers, uh, I... I Narrow it down to three, typically, and those three drivers for me were Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, and Chase Briscoe. Those odds parlayed equal out to plus 330, and if you were to throw 20 bucks on that, it would come out to $86.18, so that in itself is a big money bet in my opinion, so we'll throw the third one onto the uh, two that I just mentioned prior. So with that, we have one more thing to take care of, and that is our recommended DFS lineup, and I'm not going to speak on each driver because I... Every driver in my lineup uh, is the ones I've mentioned throughout the show. Uh, so without further ado, let's kick it off. I got Ryan Blaney as our most expensive driver, our ace in the hole, at $10,500, followed by Chase Elliott at $8,800. Then we got Ross Chastain, $8,300, Chase Briscoe, $7,500, Josh Berry, $7,400, and Noah Gregson, $7,100. So I mentioned a couple drivers here. Uh, that I was re feeling really good about. I wanted to lock in Chase Elliott, wanted to lock in Chase Briscoe, and I felt that Josh Berry is someone that you got to really, really just, you know, keep an eye on whenever we go to these short tracks now, making a statement every single week we go to them. And I also cited Noah Gregson as a really good guy uh, to have as your base because uh, of his stats overall at Martinsville 
in trucks and Xfinity and just his success in the short track package that will be used this week. So I love this lineup. I think it has a lot of potential to win people a lot of money. And uh, I, I really hope that that's the case. So going to put my money where my mouth is and lock that lineup in. Again, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, Ross Chastain, Chase Briscoe, Josh Berry, and Noah Gregson. And then I will also lock in my one big money bet as Ryan Blaney to finish top five at plus 125. One more thing to lock in before dropping the jack on the most important NASCAR betting stop of the day are my race winner and sleeper picks. And for those who don't know, uh, a sleeper in our book is whoever is 15th or lower in the race winner odds uh, per bet MGM. So for my race winner, I want to go Denny Hamlin. I really, really do. However, those race winner odds scare me, man. I, I feel like when they're that much in favor of one driver that it's too good to be true. Something's going to happen. I'm not saying Denny's not going to have a great race. Like, we, we went through all the stats. He's a lap-leading monster there. He's got the wins. He's done everything you could possibly do at Martinsville and, and getting all those Grand Flower clocks. But I feel like my gut has been right <laughs> almost every single week. I was going between Denny. I was going between Blaney because the... Stats he's had at this track, obviously. Ford struggled. Uh, he won the last race here. However, Hendrick Motorsports has won the Bolt Spring races in the next-gen car here. Those were won by William Byron and Kyle Larson. This weekend is, you know, the the ruby anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports, 40th, 40 years in the sport. I think it's going to be a Hendrick car. And Kyle Larson's the easy answer, but I like Chase Elliott. I really do. I know he hasn't finished better than 10th in the next-gen car here, but I just love how he's looked here. He's led so many laps this track. 322, I believe it was, and three of four starts, which is the, the uh, second most in the next-gen era at Martinsville. Um, I think there's a lot of positive momentum on, on his side, getting that top five at Richmond. He's been fast all year long. And I think, you know, magic tends to happen in Martinsville. And I think that's going to fall in Chase Elliott's favor this week. So I'll go with him for my race winner. And then for my sleeper, we're looking at Kyle Busch and down in the odds, which is weird to say. Uh, he has not <laughs> done very well this season outside of the first couple races. And that's now uh, reared its head in the, uh, the betting realm. But my sleeper, I'm going to go big here. And I'm going to go with uh, Noah Gregson. I just feel really good about him this week, in case you couldn't tell. He's done so damn well at this track in whatever he's driven. And I just think that he's going to surprise a lot of people and run top 10 all day in this race and finish there. So love Noah Gregson, love Chase Elliott. And I think a Hendrick Chevy is going to win this week. I don't, it may, it maybe not Chase Elliott. Maybe it will be Kyle Larson or Alex Bowman or William Byron, but I'm going to go with Chase Elliott. So those are my winners and sleepers. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this show. I'm really looking forward to Martinsville. But again, I will be out at Firebird Motorsports Park covering the NHRA Arizona Nationals. So for my NHRA fans, drag racing fans, stay plugged into my social media at Cole underscore Cusimano on Twitter. Going to be posting a lot of really cool behind the scenes content. Got some awesome stories coming out this week as well. Some tie-ins to NASCAR actually. So be on the lookout for that. You know, Tony Stewart's racing uh, in the top fuel as a rookie this year. Also got Greg Anderson driving the Hendrick cars. Funny car, uh, who's who finished runner-up in the standings last year. So uh, lots to look forward to on, on the NHRA front. Lots to look forward to on the NASCAR front at Martinsville. And uh, wish you all the best of luck in betting. And I haven't done this in a while, so how about you crack open a cold dew and enjoy this one? It seems only fitting for Martinsville. Grab a hot dog, grab a dew, have some fun. Thanks for listening, guys.